In today's society the 1980s are thought and remembered as a time full of frosted blue eye shadow. Bright neon lights. David Hasloff. Discos. Cocaine. And need I forget the huge hair. It was a revolutionary decade. And saw the rise of many blockbuster movies. Many of which would be regarded as classics. Or music that spoke to our very souls. And for video games that we all still love and cherish to this day. It would be no surprise that the kids who grew up in that decade and were exposed to the media and entertainment of the time are now using their gifts and talents to bring to life new movies, TV shows, music and video games while adding some of that special ladies vibe and spirit that inspired them. One of these examples is Moonbeam City, a show gushing with 80s aesthetic and style. The show was created by Scott Gardner, and first premiered on Comedy Central on September 16, 2015. Why do an 80s-esque? Was that like a particular period that you liked? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's definitely an obsession of mine, and, I, and I've, I've just come to enjoy anything that's sort of uh, uh, 80s but futuristic from the 80s. It just struck me that that is an aesthetic that... That that, uh, that you see in movies and you, you see in music, it's kind of what Daft Punk is doing. And but but uh, uh, but you haven't really seen a a very stupid comedy done with the, the sleek neon aesthetic that, I, that I've been so fascinated by. They definitely succeeded there. I love Moonbeam City's bright and eccentric neon colors and art style. It truly does a great job by bringing the world around the main cast of characters to life and capturing that 1980s vision of the future. The design for the human characters were heavily inspired by the art of Patrick Nagel. He created popular illustrations on board, paper, and canvas, most of which emphasize the female form in a distinctive style. He is best known for his illustrations for Playboy magazine and the pop group Duran Duran for whom he designed the cover of the best-selling album Rio. I like this approach they went with here. It gives the characters this stylish yet fascinating otherworldly look to them. The show centers on Basil Novak, a incompetent narcissistic Moonbeam City police detective who is always getting into trouble. It's okay folks, we're cops. Shoot at the base of the flames where the fire's brains are. while dragging along his police chief Pete Saz Miller and technician Kinsey Kensington. I mean Crystal Estate. Sorry I just couldn't tell these two characters apart. Dazzle also has a rival named Red Red Cunningham, who tends to purposely involve himself in Dazzle's schemes but somehow always ends up making a fool of himself. Hey what happened to Rad? Moonbeam City sadly has a rough start. It becomes painfully evident in the first few episodes that the show is having a hard time staying on its feet. The episode plots are bad or just mediocre, the jokes are just horrible and they fall flat. I'm giving you five days, Dazzle. Or you'll be gone so fast your head'll spin. My head doesn't know the meaning of the word spin. This is mostly because it is struggling tonally as to what it wants to be. Does it want to be a cop show? Does it want to be an 80s tribute? Or does it want to be Dazzle's crazy adventures? Speaking about Dazzle, I get the fact that he is supposed to be that lovable jerk. But the way how the show presents himself especially in the first few episodes makes him out to be a cold sociopath. I want someone to get this dead child off my set immediately. Thank you. Big smiles everyone, why aren't we shooting? At no point do I really empathize or relate to the rest of the cast of characters. Especially Dazzle. 
mostly because we are not given a good enough reason to. The characters just are one-dimensional cardboard cutouts of existing character types we've seen a million times before. Out of all the 10 episodes I'd have to say that I found at least 3 to be actually enjoyable. Episodes being After losing a race to work to get the parking spot closest to the elevator, Dazzle becomes depressed. Dazzle? You're embarrassing me in there. Are you upset because Rad parked barely closer than you? Yes, that's all I'm upset about. He seeks out his long-lost father, Razzle Novak who is played by none other than Adam West. Bing, bang, boom. He used to be a famous and renowned stunt driver. However, he is now playing a cop and named Speed Damon in a Batmanish children's show. Ow! You stupid cop come poop! No! Why you? No! Dazzle comes asking for help on how to perfect Razzle's signature stunt move. The quadruple flippin' split. To beat Rad Cunningham and reclaim his parking spot. Sadly however as Razzle is about to teach Dazzle his signature move, Razzle is inexplicably killed when his car bursts into flames. Dazzle and Chrysalis suspect that foul play was involved. And attempt to find Razzle's killer and bring him into justice. To prevent Mayor Jackson from dismantling the Moonbeam City's police department. They must prove their relevancy and save their own asses. Our heroes come up with a plan to hook the entire city on a synthetic drug called Clitsaterine. Wait, we're gonna create a drug ourselves? Does the mayor know about this? He really scares me. We don't need to tell the pharaoh how the pyramids are built, they just need to get built! Believe me, the less that whack job knows, the better. Doing so creating a huge drug epidemic. Don't worry everyone, I am a police officer! More drugs are coming! The police department start to panic when they have to show the public that they've caught the drug supplier. To trick the public into thinking they've caught the crook, Miller sets Brad Cunningham up as the dealer. And as you could expect, things go horribly wrong from there on. Dazzle meets and befriends an artist who makes bowling animations. Chrysalis is put in charge of a task force with Dazzle and Rad to bring down a crazed killer known as the Moonbeam City Maniac. The episode is jam-packed with so many great and funny moments. i rather not talk more about this episode as it will go into some spoiler territory. This episode is definitely the highlight of the series. I highly recommend for anyone to check this episode out if nothing else. So in conclusion, Moonbeam City tries so much to be a raunchy and adult cartoon to the likes of Archer. But the show just falls flat on its face. The show is just too unfocused and feels like it doesn't know what it wants to be. It would have been great if they would have fully embraced on the more ridiculous and over the top aspects. It was at those moments that the show was at its best and gave us some fun and memorable scenes. It just doesn't do much with the resources and material it is given. I can imagine a show like this being hard to get approved and marketed. Seeing as it is geared towards a very niche target audience. I do however like to applaud the show's creators. Even though the show wasn't a huge success they still managed to follow their vision through. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Moonbeam City. Leave a comment and let me know. If you want to see more, please like and subscribe. This is the Neon Renegade signing off.